every activist should that should just be one of the tools, one of the arrows in their quiver uh, that's ready to pull out at any time. And um, you know, for, soon we may be using it to protect uh, maybe people that quit the army <laughs> suddenly because they don't want to go to a illegal war. Mm -hmm. uh, who knows who it's who it's going to be? It, it could be the next Ed, Edward Snowden or Chelsea Manning. Um, you know, it could be extremely important a, as we move into some pretty strange times. Okay, welcome everybody. Today I'm here with Jim Babb, the badass of Philadelphia. And our topic is uh, how to do jury nullification or jury independence activism uh, without getting arrested. Uh, how are you today, Jim? Awesome. Great to be with you. I'm glad to hear it. So uh, Jim is a, um, a really interesting guy. He's got a great sense of humor, and he does a whole range of activism, everything from Libertarian Party stuff to uh, Nobody for President to, uh, you know, Jim and I did the We Won't Fly campaign together in 2010 to bring uh, dignity back, uh, <laughs> a little bit perhaps, to uh, airport uh, checkpoints. Uh, Jim, tell us, tell our listeners, those of us who, who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I think of myself as just a regular guy. I'm a father, independent business person. Um, I, I believe in individual freedom, so... Uh, Self-ownership is kind of the thing that sort of uh, maybe pulls together all of the different forms of activism I'm involved in. So the defending the rights of the individual. Uh, so it can take, it does take me in lots of different places. We have so many opportunities uh, around Philly, uh, whether it's eminent domain or, you know, yeah, the d dignity at the airport or, um, or jury nullification. I mean, that really plays into it where we've got... Uh, a great movement here for prohibition against prohibition no, no. like um, for instance we have smoke down prohibition I think is number eight coming up tomorrow here in Philly mm -hmm. uh, some mass civil disobedience going on uh, standing up against the the draconian drug laws so uh, there's so many great opportunities around here um, you know I, I kind of like to you know I, I would do it all if I can but you know there's just so much time right yeah so, uh, and, and you and I have actually done the jury, um, you know, independence uh, activism together as well, which we had a, a real blast with. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a, let's just say a variety of results that were uh, some quite favorable, some not so favorable. Right. But you've done it in a bunch of different contexts and you've never been arrested for it, right? No, no. Um, I have been questioned um, and that was kind of uncomfortable, just being questioned. And I had I've had them demand my ID mm -hmm. um, under threat of arrest. Uh, if and I've, I'm pretty sure that if I had not given my ID, I might have been arrested. I, I think that would have been likely. That was out of New Jersey, but um, uh -huh. normally, normally it's fine. Uh, most of the most of the pamphleting I've done is is here in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, at the uh, in Norristown at the at the county courthouse. Uh, nobody's even questioned me nobody's looked at me funny that it's just uh it's just you know public sidewalk pamphleting nobody cares so yeah hey so for those of our our listeners or viewers who aren't familiar with the idea of uh it goes by a bunch of names jury independence jury nullification fully informed juries jurors rights what what's that all about and why is it so important that people should really be spending our time on it well, the, a juror has the power to nullify a bad law just by saying not guilty. And this is, this is like the one remaining place in, within the system that a single individual can make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is, if they think that law is wrong, whether it's a, uh, any kind of victimless crime, uh, whether it's a drug drug crime or maybe somebody carried a, a firearm in the wrong place or, you know, there's, I mean, there's a thousand different victimless crimes on the books right now. A single juror can say, ah, uh, no, n not guilty. I'm sorry. That's ridiculous. Go home to your family. <laughs> you know, we're not, you're not going to jail this time. 
And I, I can't think of any other place, any other type of, of activism where you can actually have that result. I mean, there's very few opportunities to have that big of an impact. So that's why it's worth my time. Uh, if I can send one person home to their family instead of to a cage, well, that's, that's worth quite a bit of my time. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think that, you know, and we've already seen in some places the positive impact this has had. For example, there was a news article recently about how in Montana, they cannot try if in a certain place, they cannot effectively try marijuana cases anymore, because they can't see the jury that will convict. That's certainly a good sign. I, I'm told that's kind of the way alcohol prohibition went down when they couldn't form a jury to convict to convict uh, the moonshiners. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I mean, that's obviously the go the overall goal of jury nullification. You can nullify a bad law one time in one place with one juror, but when you create a pattern of that, then the law itself becomes um, uh, uh, nullified just because they can't they just can't use it anymore. So uh, that's obviously the long term goal is to make this such a pattern that they just say, okay, enough. Enough. We'll, hmm. we'll go bother somebody else. Right, yeah, because those prosecutors like their 99% uh, you know, conviction rates. You know, they don't want to see that go down, and, and they don't like to try a case and then lose you know, over and over again. Exactly. They're, they feel humiliated if it's not a slam dunk, because that's what they're used to. I mean, they're used to intimidating people to the point where most don't even go to trial. The, the threat is so large up front that they can just scare people to, into taking a plea and not even going, um, which they do all the time. Um, so it's just something that I'd love to see more you know, people know about just so if they're under that situation, they know, okay, well, here is a possibility. Um, and if it's something like a drug charge and if people are in that situation, I'd love to see more people be able to say, you know what, screw this. I'm, I'm going for it, and I'm going to hope that I can find one juror with a conscience that's going to say, hell no. Right. So, um, you know, let's say somebody would like to go out there and start doing jury uh, independence activism, but they're a little bit concerned about getting arrested, you know, because they've seen videos of Julian Heiklin or even of me, uh, you know, basically getting, you know, snatched by by whoever so can you give us a little how-to about how to do this kind of activism without getting arrested well there's no guarantees in life that's for sure but um, that you we can minimize the risk substantially um, and I'd say there's two types of pamphleting that we can do there's pamphleting at any time in any place um, very little risk involved with that. You're just pamphleting to the general public anywhere at any time. You can do it at a, at a courthouse. Um, like I mentioned, one of my favorite places is the Montgomery County Courthouse. I show up in the morning um, about 45 minutes before any potential jurors are instructed to arrive. I wait until about 15 minutes until after they're supposed to be there and literally within about an hour and a half or two hours, I can I can make sure that virtually any potential juror has a pamphlet in their hand, maybe 90%. Um, it's, a, it's a great spot to do it because they all walk down the same crosswalk, park in the same parking lot. It's very easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, other locations may vary. But um, if, you're doing, if you're targeting a specific case, it's a lot more dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to have an impact, if you know, for instance, there's a victimless crime, um, that's, that somebody's facing and they're on trial and you want to have a difference on a particular case, you have to be a lot more careful because they, there's a bigger opportunity for them to accuse you of jury tampering. Hmm. So, uh, but you can, you can prevent that by, first of all, um, just being a regular, being, doing it regularly. Don't target a specific case, um, but if you happen to be doing it a month or two months and there happens to be an important case during those several months, well, it'll be very hard for them to make a case against you. Um, but if you, the only day you've ever been there is the day of a, an important trial, there's a, there's a bigger risk there. So, um, and, and just be clear about, you know, when you're talking to people, um, I don't target jurors. I, I target the general public, but I just try to be in a place that might have a probability of having jurors. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 
you know, the things we say, the, the way we go about it, um, just, just be aware, you know, and know in your head. You're not targeting jurors. You're, you're just providing pamphlets to the general public in case they, ha in case they ever get jury duty someday. Um, and, you know, so many people, you know, basically anybody who's a registered voter or, you know, a reasonable, um, you know, normal law-abiding citizen is probably going to come up for jury duty at some point. So it might not be that day, but it, maybe it'll be five years from then. Um, but they're going to get jury, they're going to get that summons one day. And maybe because they, you, you had a, a conversation or they read your pamphlet, they won't just try to get out of jury duty like like everybody wants to do. Hmm. Maybe they'll say, you know what, you know what, maybe I think I, I might be able to have an impact. I might just go in there and see see what the deal is, um, you know. And if it's something that I feel I can make an impact on, um, that, that's what I'd love to see happen. Yeah. Um, um, you know, what are some other ways that we can minimize the risk? Um, well, you know that you might get questioned. So, you know how you handle that questioning you know, could determine. Um, now, some people take the Julian Heichlin approach and, you know, I don't answer your questions, leave me alone, <laughs> you know, hmm. screw you, very, you know, a, you know, principled, principled, but not de-escalating, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. I, I think there's, you know, if, if you're concerned about that, then you can always just comply with their instructions. Um, I mean, that, again, that's not a guarantee. For instance, you didn't have any warning when they just decided to tackle you yeah. for filming. But um, you know, I, I think normally, if if they're asking you questions and you're uh, and you're not belligerent, you can still you know uh, maintain your your dignity. You know, uh, stick to your principles. But um, there's no need to be argumentative with them. Um, that 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 might have an impact. Or just if they if they tell you to leave, go ahead and leave. <laughs> You know, like, you're not going to be pamphleting either way after that. You're mm -hmm. either going to be not pamphleting at home or you're going to be not pamphleting in jail. So, <laughs> <laughs> so decide. Um, but, you know, I don't think I've even been told to leave. So I don't really see that as something. Uh, I was told to leave in New Jersey mm -hmm. um, during the Ed Fortune trial. And, um and the group that I was with, we talked about it, and, and we decided to leave uh, because, it, just for, for a tactical perspective, um, this was late in, in the trial. We had been out there every single day for a week. Every single juror and, and person working in that courtroom and anybody in the neighborhood had received like four or five different pamphlets that week. So <laughs> the cost of leaving was pretty low. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, again, just... Uh, you know, and of course, filming is important. Um, I'm comfortable filming or pamphleting here in, in Norristown by myself um, just because I've done it so many times and I'm, I'm not too worried about it. But the first few times, maybe first four or five times, I made sure I had somebody with me. We all had cameras and just, just, <laughs> just in case. Um, right. Having those cameras and, you know, as we learned, we learned a lot. Um, you know, in our work, you know, together with Julian Heikland is that one camera is not enough. If you're really in a potential situation, one camera is not going to do it. You need a camera and a backup camera. At um, a minimum, yeah. So, um, but, you know, I think once you sort of break in a place, you can sort of get the feel for it and, and know what the threat is. I mean, after, after a couple times in Philadelphia, those people, they don't, they don't say anything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, in Philadelphia, I feel it's safe to pamphlet now still uh, just because, you know, we sort of made them think about it and they had to put out the memo, oh, just, yeah, leave those guys alone. Just <laughs> pamphleting, they, nothing you can do about it. And they actually defended us once from, from security guards. You remember that? Well, I remember one security guard, like, hadn't gotten the memo or something. And uh -huh, he, uh -huh. he, he tried to snatch your camera and, and he failed, but he, like, scratched you or, mm -hmm. or it's a minor scuffle there but uh could have got could could have been worse but so but. so what's your favorite pamphlet which pamphlet do you like to give out and where can our viewers find that um i use the the true or false pamphlet it's um it's a know your rights um from from fully informed jury association they have a variety of pamphlets and they make them freely available to download and print 
And if you have an event coming up, if you're doing a fair or a special outreach somewhere of any kind, call them. They'd love to send you a stack of, of color pamphlets. Mm -hmm. So if printing them is cost prohibitive, but you have a great opportunity, these guys are, you know, they're so generous with their materials. They, they love people to, to take advantage of that. And, um, you know, in fact, they, they frequently have contacted me. Oh, I hear you're doing something. Can we send you a box <laughs> of stuff? Oh, really? Cool. Yeah, so they're they're really great. Um, Fija dot org, and you can see the the pamphlets they have available. Um, I, I'd love to have uh, you know a, a bigger variety. Um, they've sent me some of their other glossy ones that I've used as well, but um, I like the idea of having three or four different ones, mm -hmm. uh, a little like a little group of pamphlets because because. If somebody does get jury duty, they're sitting there for a long time with nothing to read. <laughs> it's a great time for them to learn about the drug war or about gun control or about you know any of these issues that that may end up in their in their case. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it all it all ties in together with the uh, I like the way you call it jury jury or juror independence, I think, is a, is a good term for it. Um, probably a lot easier to understand than jury nullification for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I got that from Clay Conrad, who um, is a lawyer in Texas, I believe, who kind of wrote the book on, on this whole topic. Uh, it's, a qu it's quite a good book. I'm about a third of the way through. And, and I'm, I'm actually friends with him on Facebook as well, and I hope to interview right. him as part of this series as well. Excellent. So, um, so basically, it seems like, you know, it, it, this is really important, you know, to sum up, this is really important activism. It is a place where one person can have a huge impact. Um, it, it can be done without undue risk. It can be done without, being, without getting arrested. Um, and there are people like FIJA.org, the Fully Informed Jury Association, who will even send you materials to help you do it. Um, so, and you, you suggest that people get there early in the morning, right? Uh, that's the time that I think is most effective, uh, because now, depending on your courthouse, that, that may vary when jurors are told to show up. Some courthouses, they might have multiple arrival times throughout the day. Um, at my local courthouse, it's just the morning. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can just call your courthouse, say, hey, when do jurors show up? They'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Where do jurors park? Oh, okay, great. Um, you know, are they coming in tomorrow? Okay, great. <laughs> they're people that are just answering questions. They they feel happy. They know the answer. They're not they're not shy about it. So, yeah. so that's a good tip. You know, you can call ahead and find out. You know, when is the the best day and what's the best time and what's the best place, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and because there's courthouses of all different sizes, some may have them once a week. Uh, some have them all day, every day, depending on the on the volume of of trials they have going on. So mm -hmm. uh, it certainly varies based on location. Mm -hmm. um, and and what about so th so that's pamphleting. That that's one very effective way. What are some other ways that people can get the word out about this this power, um, and you know get educate people and inspire people. Uh, to use it and to educate others about it? Well, that's a good question. Um, I, I look for opportunities to talk about it. Um, the Smoke Down Prohibition is an event we have on a regular basis here in Philadelphia, and I've had the opportunity to address that audience um, about the power of jury nullification. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's, that's sort of a good market because these people are are deep into the uh, the legalization movement in one way or another. They understand that the these are victimless crimes. They're looking for tools. A lot of people there are, have been on trial or will be on trial themselves. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's something that, that if you're in, if you're against drug prohibition, you really need to have this under your belt. You got You should be talking about it all the time with everybody that that does that. And um, also in the self-defense community, I think it's really big. Um, mm -hmm. I would look for opportunities within the you know the Second Amendment community or the the uh, because it's getting more and more difficult just to own a firearm or to carry it. So this is this is one of the biggest, most important victimless crimes that people are suffering from right now, besides the drug war. So um, you know, understanding how you know how that can be used to protect 
your right to, of self-defense. Um, other other, mm -hmm. other uh, topics would be food freedom. Uh, we've seen jury nullification being used in food freedom cases like the Amish raw milk farmers, uh, things like that. And you know, more and more th weird things are becoming illegal, whether it's growing food in your front yard or yeah, growing or lemonade stands, right? Or, yeah, lemonade stands or <laughs> collecting your own collecting your own rainwater or you know there's so many weird victimless crimes out there and and there's more and more all the time so every one of those is sort of an opportunity to educate somebody on this power mm -hmm. all right well then um, you know James Babb he's a, a badass liberty activist in the Philadelphia area uh, I like Jim a lot he's a funny guy he's an effective activist uh, Jim what's the best way for people to get in touch with you and to stay connected with you because you're a good guy to be connected with. Well, um, you can hit me up on Facebook. Um, I have jamesbab.com pointed right at my Facebook account. So um, that's something that I usually check every day and I'm happy to communicate with new people at any time. Um, and you can send me a private message or post on my wall right there. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay. So any, anything you'd like to add or, or plug uh, before we wrap up? Uh, no, I think, you know, we've covered the, the basis of this. Um, you know, we, we certainly live in some interesting times, and I, I fully, um, you know, encourage people to, to, to master the jury nullification pamphleting and, and have that. Every, every activist, should, that should just be one of the tools, one of the arrows in their quiver uh, that's ready to pull out at any time. And, um, you know, for, soon we may be using it to protect uh, maybe people that quit the army <laughs> suddenly because they don't want to go to an illegal war. Mm -hmm. uh, who knows who it's who it's going to be? It, it could be the next Ed, Edward Snowden or Chelsea Manning. Um, you know, it could be extremely important a, as we move into some pretty strange times. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Jim, uh, thank you so much for this interview. It has been a real pleasure speaking with you. Um, yeah, we used to we used to do more activism together, but since we don't live in the same place anymore, it's uh, kind of hard. But but it's 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 a real pleasure. And um, thanks, thanks a lot hey, for this. My my pleasure. Thank you.